Hi, and welcome to another episode of Tom Ray's Art Podcast. I'm Tom. On today's show, there's kind of an interesting story behind this one. The person I talk to today is someone that I actually used to work with at a store where we painted custom t-shirts for people when I was in high school. So uh, we've kind of known each other over the years since then. He was in a band. I was in a band. We both worked at this place in the mall that did this stuff. Um, and we've known each other over the years. He's a very nice person. And he has a new project that he's doing where he makes uh, T-shirts based on logos of Madison and Wisconsin businesses that have since gone out of business. I felt like as I was saying that sentence, I was structuring it poorly, but you get what I'm saying. They're no longer around. So it's kind of a nostalgic look at things from Wisconsin stores past, past, past. <laughs> all of a sudden I can't talk, but it's a great conversation. We try not to go down the, Hey, remember this sort of thing. But when we do, I'm going to say it was kind of fun. Enjoy the show. Here it is starting right now. I'm Rob Parkinson, and I'm a freelance, uh, a full-time freelance artist, as well as a um, kind of an entrepreneur and <laughs> in, in sorts in a t-shirt world. So mostly just apparel. Um, been doing it since I met you in the early '90s. Yes. So. No. Technically, we met working on t-shirts. <laughs> yes, yeah, we did. Back in the 1900s, which is funny. I just yeah. that I only made that connection uh, as I was getting ready to talk with you because I was looking at your stuff and I've been seeing your stuff because we follow each other online. But mm -hmm. uh, then I was just like, wait a minute, this is what we used to do. <laughs> like we, used to, we used to read, people would come in. It, yeah. It, we worked at a place that I, I like to tell people was our generation's version of Hot Topic because there wasn't one. It really was. Yeah. It had all the music, the concert tees, all that stuff. Yeah. Joke tees. Yeah. yeah, but that's not what it started out as. It was a spin art place. Like they would have parties where you would, we had the big spin machine that none of us wanted to work. And <laughs> no one wanted to work. It. it was so annoying. Yeah. yeah. And you came in there after me. I was working there before you. But yeah, that was, but the real money but was. You were, we, still there. you were still there when I started. Yes. Yeah. I was still there. Then I left and then I came back and then the store had moved to State, State Street. Street. Yeah. But you had stayed there the whole time. And yeah, it was. I forgot you had left for a while. Yeah. yeah that's right. Yeah. I had a kid. <laughs> <laughs> ah, high school. Um, yeah. Anyway, uh, so <laughs> the but that was the funny thing is the money maker that was in the place. Which this is look at me. I'm going to be bringing it back. You know, instead of you and me yeah. talking about our old work history the entire show, I knew our way would come up. So. <laughs> I know, get it out of the way early. But the money maker at the place and the owner learned this right away. Wasn't necessarily having these parties where kids would do the spin art shirts. It was, we, we were in a mall and there were, we would sell rock t-shirts and then people, and then we realized that, uh, and this was again, before you started, we were like, well, we have all this paint. Why don't, and people are always like, do you have this shirt? And we were like, why don't we just make these shirts? Why don't we just paint them by hand and make people custom shirts, which we could charge like $50 for. <laughs> And I had no idea that's how that started. I, I always thought Artway always included that. Mm -mm. Because when I got there, that was already a thing. Yeah. No, it just, yeah. we lucked out. Like Joel uh, was also an artist. Like it, the thing yeah. was, is all of us that worked there, well, me kind of, like I was trying to be an artist, but you guys were all like way beyond me. Like I could do some cartoons. You guys were like making portraits and like surreal landscapes. And I was going, look, Garfield. Um <laughs> But that was the thing is people would ask us to custom do those. Now, yeah. getting to with what you said now, uh, currently you are, mm -hmm. uh, you have a company that, uh, and I was interested in uh, when you first started posting the idea. And I want to get to how the idea started uh, with, with uh, what it, you're saying it's Relic Ragware. Relic Ragware. Okay. Yeah. Um, and, 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 and just a spinoff from um, my freelance company, which is Relic Studios. Um, and I've been doing that forever. Um, full time doing that full time since 2010, um, which is how I was able to move down here in Florida. And just you know, you don't have you're not hooked to a job. Yeah, you can just you can just go and you can work anywhere, which is nice. But I always had kind of an idea, which is why I named it Relic, because I was always interested in nostalgia and always interested in old old art, um, 50s, 60s, 70s. You know, 
um, I wanted to do something eventually, my own line of stuff. And it, and that, that idea came in back in 2006. And I, you know, I'm just trying to make money. I'm trying to get things together with my freelance. So it never really took, took form until really, I guess the pandemic, um, is when I started really? putting a lot of together. Um, I had something else going and I had a Shopify account and everything and I had everything set up and it was e-commerce going back and forth. It was a different idea. It just wasn't working. I wasn't passionate about it. And um, I kind of learned that you got to have that. You're not going to want to take that extra time to put, um, you know, after you've done all your work during the day to come and sit down and work on this other venture you work on unless you're passionate about it so I, that kind of fell off but i kept i kept the spot of the shopify account because i knew i'd come back to it but it sat there for four years and i'm paying monthly on it <laughs> it's mm -hmm. i'm not doing anything with it so finally i yeah during the pandemic and i had work still during the pandemic you know when you're working at home you're, we weren't really affected by that um as much um but um then i just started putting things together from there um and even then, it took me a, a couple of years because I, I started that in 2020, 2021 or so. And, uh, you know, I just started putting it up a few months ago. Yeah. So. And, and so there's first I want to go back to uh, when you started the freelance job. There are a bunch of questions of things I want to ask there, but uh, yeah, that there you was just talked about. No, no, but that's great because you're covering a lot of the stuff I want to get to. Oh, first of all, which we never we spoke about it when we started the show, but you are currently located in Florida. You used to live in Madison. Uh, for people yeah, that didn't know. For about 10 years, which is where I went to school at METC. Mm -hmm. uh, and then um, after a number, yeah, after about 10 years there, then I had gotten a job in Waukesha area to do the Harley uh, work that I'm doing okay. now. Uh, working Harley Davidson. That was in 99. And that was um, actually working for Harley Davidson or this was freelance? That was actually working. Well, it wasn't for the Harley Davidson corporate. It was through a, for a licensee that had the license gotcha. to print. Apparel. And that was a place in, in Waukesha down, down there. And uh, that was my full-time job up until 2010 when I, when I went full-time freelance. Okay. But that was all Harley Davidson, um, all, all Harley stuff. So. And was um, this and, shirts or was it designs in other aspects? Like what were you creating designs for? Just apparel, just t-shirts. Just apparel, okay. Sweats, you know, um, it was just strictly the license for, for apparel. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, cause yeah. I, and yeah, cause I used to work for a place that got like uh, they were doing uh, Calvin Klein, but they could only do the shirts. So they were always yeah. coming up with different Calvin Klein shirts. They couldn't print any other things except that. Not yeah. that they were equipped to do anything else, but were you printing in house or was this something you were sending off? Nope, this was all in house. Okay. In fact, um, in fact, the guy that owned it's called Hollebeck. Mm -hmm. So you know Hollebeck because yeah. Hollebeck. Gave us all of our transfers for Artwave. Right. All the transfer lettering and everything came from Hollaback. Because the guy that owned the place started, kind of came up with that whole transfer business back in the 60s, I think. Really? Yeah, he worked. Oh. Uh, he was like, uh, he was an artist. He, I, I believe he was an artist at, uh, he'd set up at, at at fairs and stuff and, and kind of do his own thing. But he came up with this process of the transfer, I believe. Yeah. Uh, the that was always transfer. a story that I heard. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and then he started this this uh, this business, and and he got the license to do other things to keep kind of things rolling. But like um, he originated the actual heat transfer concept. You're saying? I believe so. Yeah, that's the story I've heard. Huh? I've never thought of that before. It just it's just something I always you know it's something that just exists. Like you don't question. Like no, it's I, just always been there. <laughs> yeah, I thought it was weird when I showed up there. I got a job there. I'm like Hollaback. I know this name. You know? Yeah. We get that stuff at Artwave all the time. Uh, they did Harley back then, even, and they, but they did it in transfers. So we'd have their Harley transfers um, on the walls mm -hmm. in, in our, and then and then we had the transfer lettering. Okay. So, um, I do miss transfer day. lettering. That was fun. Yeah. <laughs> Those were great, especially it, when you get the fuzzy Cooper font. Um, yeah. And was, the brush script. And uh, yeah, it was, <laughs> they had a, a very limited palette of, of fonts back then, I guess. You're right. <laughs> <laughs> Unlike now, kids in their endless use of fonts. No, I'm just kidding. Uh, it but takes me, it takes me so long to go through my fonts every time I'm doing the design. It's just it's just a slow roll, and I'm, I, it's the worst thing ever. The funniest I, thing I, is, I yeah, and I'll collect a bunch of fonts, 
And then when I'm looking for one, I'm always looking for something really subtle. And I'm just like, look at all these just like obnoxious fonts that I've collected. Cause I'm like, well, that looks cool. And it's like, but, but I'm never going to use it. It's for whatever you're working on at the time. And then just (laughs) sits there for, I mean, you don't want to get rid of it because you might have to come back to that design and fix something and you'll need that font. So that sits there and then it just accumulates with all the other fonts. Yeah. Oh, okay. So, all right. So but now, so you, you were working with Harley. I got to remember to stay on topic here. Um, <laughs> you were working with Harley, but when did you go into freelance? Cause that's a pretty nice gig that you got going there. So how did, how did you end up? Uh, you said that you were doing more freelance work and looking for work that way. Was this something you were doing coinciding with it? Did it start doing better? How did that branch off into your own thing? Uh, well, I started doing the freelance a little bit um, in the mid two thousands and it was actually a lot of us in the art room at, at the Harley gig were, were picking it up at the same time because we had gotten, uh, bought out by, a uh, a bigger company oh. uh, called a VF. And, um, so we were all worried we were going to get, you know, canned eventually. Okay. So we were, we, we decided we needed to kind of be proactive and we were doing it all together as a, as a, as a group of artists and that didn't really work out. And oh, you were going to be a collective. Yeah, we were going to be a collective. All right, uh, and it, it it started out as that, and it was fun and it was um, exciting, and and we kind of saw that we could generate some interest based on our you know our portfolios and all that, and that was exciting. Um, and then that didn't really work out, and we figured, and we kind of saw that we weren't going to be canned, mm-hmm. <laughs> and and so most of the other guys kind of stopped that the freelance idea. And, uh, I just kept on with it. Um, it, it, it and it was, it was, it was a tough thing at first. Cause you know, you're working all day and you come home and the only time you have to work on it is at night is on weekends or whatever. Yeah. Um, so it, it took me a while to build up that client base to where I would be comfortable going full time. Um, and when I did go full time, right before I did, VF actually sold the building we were in, in Waukesha. Oh, and it, they transferred. They also owned the name. They owned the, the Jansport label too. So that was in Appleton, mm-hmm. and they transferred some of us up there, and then they let the rest of us go. So they eventually did let us go, but it was way later than we thought it would be. Okay. So I ended up moving up to Appleton for that, and then shortly after that is when I, um, I quit there to do freelance full time. What uh, kind of stuff know, were you doing? For freelance? Yeah, for freelance. I had um, a good client um, with Haynes. And oh, we really? Doing- oh, so, okay, yeah. full on freelance. Okay. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> this yeah. wasn't just I, like, oh, I had a friend who needed some things for a thing. <laughs> no, I, you know, thankfully, you know, I, I have uh, this I have a wonderful wife that, that kind of, I wanted to go full time freelance way early, mm-hmm. you know, and, and I, and I, kind of knew I wasn't prepared for it, but I just wanted it so bad, you know, mm-hmm. and then I have her over here going, okay, right. She does the bills, write down the bullet points. Well, who are you getting the money from? When is it coming in? I'm like, ah, you know, I can't do it. I can't do it. I got enough money coming in. So it, eventually when you get enough clients and then you get that one big one, which is for me, Haynes, mm-hmm. um, then it starts to take shape a little, a little more. And uh, you see how much you're bringing in per month and you can, you know, you can project that out and see if you can make it work. Um, and, and at the time, I had other things going on that uh, financially in my life and our life that it made sense to do it um, this way. It sounds weird, you know, to give up a full time job and benefits and all that. But um, it's something I'd always wanted to do. And it's and it was just the right time to do it. Yeah. Um, and it was awesome. You know, it, um, being able to work at home for yourself is the best thing ever, you know, and yeah. it, the, the hardest part really is just, is just, um, you know, keeping that motivation where it needs to be. And, and when you, and when you know, that's all you have, you, you there's no choice, but to stay motivated. Right. Um, Here's so. the funny thing though, too. So knowing again, with us knowing each other for a very long time, you working and doing design for Harley. I get that. I under like that's that's your forte. Like I can see you doing that. You getting Haynes as a personal client. Like I'm sitting there going, how are you? You know, and I know that you're capable. I know that you're a great artist, but I know the background of what we like to draw or what we did like to draw back then. And uh, I mean, 
truth be told, like 90% of us that worked at Artway, we were all metalheads. So drawing skulls and motorcycles. That makes sense. (laughs) Right. So that's interesting how, uh, and that's impressive. Not that you couldn't. That's the thing. It's like, I realize people grow and of course you can expand in other things, but you saying that you got work for Haynes, which is great. But at the same time, I'm like, how are you? What, what did you draw for Haynes? (laughs) Yeah. I mean, and, and I got that because some guys just found me on LinkedIn, a guy. He, he oh, no was, kidding. Uh, he's a salesman. Uh, um, and I, I still work with him uh, on occasion. Um, but he, he was uh, a salesperson uh, for Haynes and, and he had programs going and he would, and he'd run these designs past target or whatever um, Walmart. Um, and then, and he needed a bank of artists to take care of what he needed. Um, so what, at, at any given time, I'd be doing mostly like, kids sports designs uh you know uh play ball you know that kind of stuff mm. um dinosaurs you know that this stuff was all going oh. in, in in walmart you know um so there's which there that's was a pretty cool more, too <laughs> yeah so there's, there's a little more freehand uh, art going on which is good because um you know when you're working in, in photoshop all the time doing harley you, you kind of get away from the the freehand aspect a little bit because everybody needs things in a hurry you know and and you learn how to do it fast in Photoshop. I just, right. It's, everything's faster that way. Okay. Um, so it, it, having another client like that, that, that gives you the opportunity to, even though it's kids designs, it, it is a whole different uh, element of, of what, what you need to do. You know, um, it, it hones your skills, I guess. Yeah. You know, in that department. Okay. Uh, but, you know, I had that, I was, I was able to quit and do that. And then of course, you know, right when I quit, then, Haynes scaled back. (laughs) Of course. (laughs) Yeah. And so I had other clients, you know, little clients here and there. And and that's kind of the way it's always gone with the full-time freelance. You know, you have something for a while and then it falls off and then you have to pick up something else to make up for it. And um, it's a a lot of up and up and downs and and just trying to navigate, you know, even those out, you know, not get too low, not get too high. And I feel like I've done that pretty well. Um, but I've always had a good one or two steady clients to keep me going and then some others to supplement. Okay. Uh, and, and to this day, that's kind of how it works. And and then you, you kind of feel things going on in some of these clients and you go, I think I better start looking. Okay. For something yeah. else. Um, things are maybe transitioning. Uh, Harley's going through that now. I, I'm still working with Harley now. And, oh, um, yeah, because I was going to say, I thought I saw you posting some Harley designs not too long ago before before you yeah, started yeah. the Reliquaire thing. Yeah, that's still my main thing, but it's Harley's going through transitions, so you know, and they've always had ups and downs too, corporate wise. So, oh yeah, I'm sure um, it, it, it's been it's been a ride with them, but um, you see some of this happening, and then you try to plan accordingly, and hopefully mm-hmm. it doesn't go to hell next week (laughs) (laughs) that's what we can all just hope for you know (laughs) now you had mentioned uh that you had started a shopify store and i'm assuming when you said and you held on to it i'm assuming you said when you started the shopify store you were implying that uh your stuff was print on demand correct yeah yeah okay yeah direct garment printing yeah all right and you're are you doing that through like what printful or printify or are you do what how are you doing your print on demand I was with the first um, uh, idea I had. It was called Freedom Forever, and uh, we it was with a partner of mine up in Madison, actually. Oh, and and uh, we went through one of those other print houses, the Printfuls, or I don't remember what it was now. Um, but now I'm I'm just using a local place um, 20 minutes down the road from me. Oh, they okay. Have, they have their direct to garment printers, and I can go there, pick up the shirts, I can talk to them, I can. You know, collaborate on ideas as far as like um, what I want to do with this in the future. That kind of right. I'm I, this is all beginning stages for me with this. Yeah. So, you know, as I put it up, I knew most of my sales were going to be friends and family at first, which mm-hmm. is great. And you you want to you want to get the you know get the system working, right? And how it works, the ordering and and fulfilling and and uh, checking the prints, make sure they're good and pack and ship and all that stuff and, and get all that squared away so that when you start doing the marketing and the SEOs or whatever the hell it is, it's like, <laughs> yeah. I'm so bad at that. That's, it doesn't matter what kind of art you have. If you can't market it right, 
get it in front of the right people, it's not, it's just going to sit there. So that's the hard part of it. Right. That's kind of what I'm coming up to now. It's like, there's just transitions to, you know, making it better, making it bigger. It was never an idea to bring me in enough money to pay my bills. I, I, I have that with the relic, uh, freelance stuff. This is kind of like a, a 12 to 15 year retirement plan. <laughs> right. So I can massage this into something eventually. Um, and I've always got ideas running with it. So it, it's just a lot of fun to, it's, it's been a lot of fun working with it. And I will say you, you've done a nice deep dive. Like, uh, like I'm, yeah. I've seen the stuff you have and I'm like, okay, he did that one. All right. I've, I've been waiting for him to do that one. And you eventually did the Paramount oh, no. one, you know, and then, oh, yeah. <laughs> but there's somewhere I'm looking at it and I'm, I'm like, oh, that's good. And uh, clearly the baseball ones are the most popular. At least that's what it shows on the, on the site is some of the old Milwaukee Brewers and Braves stuff. Um, yeah. And that, those, those you have to be careful with because, I, you know, it's licensed. So you can't say Brewers and all that, but people have been doing this forever with just Milwaukee baseball or, you know, Milwaukee, that stuff you can do. And I've done that with Packers stuff through other companies where it's like, all right, you can't say Packers. Okay. But it's Green right. Bay football whatever. Um, so, and, and, and with those, I was going off of just really old, um, real old designs or, or aesthetics from, you know, card companies or flyers or baseball programs and things like that, which fit with what I was looking to do with this whole thing. It's all, yeah, you know, vintage and nostalgic, you know? Yeah. It's, it's interesting too, with you saying that, like, there's a company here that's cashing in on Scani, which it's, it's like they made up their own term that it's like, none of us say that, you know, <laughs> and like now we're, they're trying to coin a phrase for people from Wisconsin, just because there's no licensing involved in it whatsoever, but they use right. sort of the same font and it's on a red shirt. Anyway, sorry, yeah. that got bitter real fast. Well, um, that's what happened with the grunge <laughs> thing, too. The, the name grunge was never something they said there. Right, yeah, that, exactly. media gave it, you know? Yeah. <laughs> media. Um, <laughs> but I want to go back to something that this is actually very impressive, and I want to know more how you went through this. So I get the drop shipping and hooking up Spotify with, like, Printful or Printify or something like that. You finding your own place that's genius. And at the same time, how did you achieve that? Because that's, that's an accomplishment right there. How did you find this place in town to work with a print on demand? And also, is it screen print on demand or is it print to garment, direct to garment on demand? What I'm doing is direct to garment, but they, okay. if you want to do print demand, print on demand, you would have to warehouse thing. You'd have to get a bunch of things printed up Okay, warehouse so that they can ship it out. Right now I'm doing the shipping myself. Oh, um, you are. But, okay. Yeah. Um, and it just works out better that way at the moment because I don't have a lot coming in. But I, eventually they would drop ship it for me. Um, but they can do that. So I know that already. Are they already connected to the Spotify API or are you mar no. messaging them directly? How is that? I'm messaging them directly. We got a kind of a convoluted system that works for us. Between okay. The two of us. But um, it works. And, um, and what's the system? Experience. It's really, I get an order in and I, on the subject, I say order number, you know, relic ragware, order number, whatever. And then in the, in the body, you know, I'm just, I, well, I do as I attach a, like a snapshot of the order that shows the shirt with the size and everything from, from Shopify. And then, um, and then I'm just really just reiterating that typing it out ex, extra large, you know, whatever brand of shirt it is, what size it is. And, uh, and then I attach the, uh, you know, the, the shirt with the design on it and, and a ping file, which is all they need to print it. And I go and I go from there. And as long as that, that little number order numbers on the subject, they can keep track of it better. I can keep track of it. Um, then, you know, everything's, you know, everything's paid online and then you go pick it up and then they give you a receipt and you throw it in your little folder of receipts that you, that okay. I send over to my wife that does the books and the, you know, um, it, but I just, I just really just call, you know, looked around the area for screen printers and, and I actually went into a few of them. And this was during the first foray of Shopify, you know, freedom forever stuff. And, uh, and just kind of talked to some people and figured out, who would work for me and okay. who would work best for what I was doing. So 
they just happen to be the ones that that I picked. It's, they're called Anchor Screen Printing, um, and they're and they're great, great building, great people. Um, and you kind of get a feel. I I was I've been in and out of screen printing facilities for forever since mm-hmm. the '90s, so I know kind of a little bit about what I want out of them. Um, so that helps. I mean, to to be someone that's been in the screen printing industry, when you're trying to find a screen printer, it's a little easier, you know, because you kind of know the ins and outs of it. But, yeah. Um, well, but it, yeah. I mean, that's all it is. It was just kind of investigating and, and see what might work best for me. Yeah. And, and that's the thing is I know a lot of people who haven't done uh, the print on demand because they – they never get to see the product or have any sort of say in how it gets sent when, or, you know, and, and also sometimes it's like, it's going to be printed on this, this place over here. It's going to be printed in another part of the country over here. And yeah. you actually found a way to connect it and even, even get it back and ship it yourself. It's, it, that's interesting that that you were able to figure out that direction. I, I like yeah, that. And that's what I didn't like about the bigger national like the printfuls or the spread shirts and all right. these other places, there was, we found when we started um, doing samples with these places is that the customer service wasn't the greatest. If you wanted to them to send you samples or just even JPEGs of it, it was like pulling teeth, you know, and, hmm. and I'm, you know, part of the freelance thing I do, it's all about building relationships, you know, and that's how you keep your clients and you, you build that up and it's the most important thing. So, um, to be face to face with somebody is, is the best thing if if you can make it work. You know, right. If something that works for that. Um, so I'm glad that that I, I just got lucky to find a good place. But at any time you're able to just be hands on and go there. And once they have a, once you get with someone, if you're with someone local and you can see the quality consistently, then by the time you go to to have them drop ship something, you don't technically have to see it you know it's going to look good you know maybe if it's a new design you you have them do a sample first and make sure it's the way it should be or whatever and that's just for direct to garment if you decide to actually go and screen print it and then you got to go through that process again because it's a different process and the the inks are different and um the look is different yeah Uh, so there's a lot of things to think about i guess and either either way you go yeah, I actually, I actually kind of like the quality of uh, direct to garment. I'm kind of surprised by it. I didn't think I would, but I've got a few shirts where I'm like, "Wow, this lasted a lot more than the screen printed version that I got." I've really? got a couple I, of shirts I, like I, that. I had some that lasted really long, and some that faded quick. And uh, really, okay. I learned the guys actually at Anchor where I print. Um, if you're direct to garment printing, they said the best way to go is on 100% cotton. If you go on 50 50s. It doesn't mm. adhere to that fabric, so it'll fade faster, okay. or you'll see the fade right away. It just, it just won't, it won't um, adhere to that, to that poly. Okay. So, one hundred percent. That's something I learned. That that's helpful, you know. So gotcha. you know what kind of garment to get, um, to where it's going to last a little longer, you know. And the feels better, the feels softer, uh, which right. is good. Um, I think as as we've gone along, I think most people are kind of got kind of tired of the heavy shirts, you know, just all the ink on the shirt. It starts, especially down here. You can't wear it down here. It's right. hot as hell. No, I, I am happy that Gildan yeah. finally realized that they don't need to make a shirt that's created out of like a cardboard box. Like <laughs> <laughs> just recently I got one and it was like, oh crap, it's a Gildan. I put it on and I'm like, yeah. oh, it feels like a normal shirt. When did they start doing this? So. Yeah, they started, <laughs> they got on board with the soft style stuff. Yeah. Eventually. Um, <laughs> And, and it's a little more expensive, but still for Guild, it's Gildan, so it's a little cheaper. You know? Yeah. And he's got to shop around a little bit, but um, right. You go, you go buy a band shirt or something, and they're still on those heavy tees, man. Everything's on concert tees. Well, I mean, band shirts, it's going to be on the cheapest shirt you can get. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> That's how you do it. <laughs> yeah, you ain't got no money to pay for this. Uh, so how, now when you started the uh relic wagware or i can't say it relic ragware <laughs> you should do a dog line version and call call it relic wagware um, well, there you go that's a million dollar I, idea right there for you i know where, where do i send you the royalties <laughs> now what was the first thing that started it what was the thing uh that made you go you know i should do more of these uh, what shirt were you making? What design? Like, how did this come about? 
Oh, actually, it came about because I wanted the shirt and I couldn't find it anywhere. And what that, one? Black Bear. The Black I Bear. Was gonna, I was going to say it was probably the Black Bear, but I didn't want to guess. And right. nobody, as far as I know, ever did one. I think at some point somebody did do one. It was like a hand-drawn thing, as far as I could tell. I mean, there's a they got a Facebook group for Black Bear, and I've been on there searching around for stuff. Okay. Really. So then at that point, all I did was just use the, the lettering from the storefront um, – whatever the, the light above the door and the storefront, I used that font and just stacked it, you know, and, and everybody knows what that is, but um, it kind of started as, as that I wanted, I wanted certain shirts that I just couldn't find. So I'm like, well, I'll just do it myself. <laughs> you know what? I can do it. So, and then that just kind of spurred me on to other stuff. And there hasn't been a, a, an R and R shirt. There hasn't been a Paramount shirt that I could tell. There's been headliner shirts. I've seen those out there. Yeah. Okay. Um, and then again, this is just the Madison area. And I just wanted to, I started with that because that's what I know. Um, I'm from Wisconsin Rapids. So I, I started with a lot of those because I knew a lot of that stuff. But I'm, you know, I'm branching out to everywhere and and uh, not just music related. Um, you know, it's just Wisconsin. You know, it's, there's things synonymous with Wisconsin, you know, bowling and mm-hmm. snowmobiling and all that kind of stuff. There's some really cool imagery from 70s and 60s and hunting stuff it's just it's just great it's a great wormhole to get into and yeah if you, you're going on ebay you can you can get into a vintage wormhole where people are selling the, the weirdest stuff ever and like oh my god i gotta put that on the shirt you know um i mean i just realized right now you can't see it because it's black on black but i'm wearing a roller drum uh logo shirt roller drum. <laughs> <Is> that <laughs> yeah that was in madison uh it's a dmv now or actually it's right next to where the dmv is and it's uh i think it's just a warehouse now but it was yeah it was a roller rink and i used to go there all the time to pick up That's chicks awesome. man yeah yeah <laughs> or, or stand in a corner and watch them you know right exactly yeah middle school um yep. <laughs> but it, now and speaking of that like i know other people have done shirts like this. Like, I don't even remember where I got this one. I've had it for years and it's a, it's a print on or a direct to garment one. Okay. Uh, but I don't think it's around anymore. And to tell you the truth, I couldn't tell you. I think one day I just looked to see if anybody was making a roller drum shirt and I found it and I bought it and it probably arrived maybe three weeks later, you know, <laughs> took forever. Um, cause it was print on demand, but I couldn't tell you for the life of me, who made it or if I could ever find it again. Uh, so have, have you run into any other people going, Hey, we're doing that and going yeah. up to the other thing. Like, has anybody gone? No, you can't do that. So tell me the ins and outs of you doing this type of, uh, design. Yeah. I mean, I, with anything you're doing your research to see who's all going to be your competition or who's already doing your idea. There's many people doing it. Um, yeah. Uh, there's a, a few places I found that, are doing similar things, but they're doing it nationally. Okay. Uh, not really focusing on one area, uh, but they do mm-hmm. have things for Wisconsin. They'll have things for Milwaukee. So the bigger cities they'll, they'll hit. And, and really that's what they're doing in, in, in the other States. Um, so they're making it more wide ranging. Um, so, you know, I knew I was just going to stick for the most part. I don't know how this will, will end up, but for now I'm, I'm sticking to Wisconsin. So, that's what I know. Yeah. Um, but, I, you know, I'll search around and if I have some shirt that I want to do, I'll search and see if one of these other places are doing it. And it's, and they have on occasion. And if they do, I'll maybe stay, either stay away from it or I'll do a different version of it. There's a, there was another um, place doing an okay's design. Um, it was the only one. And, and, and all it was, was just the, the happy face. On right. The shirt with the hat or whatever and, and i had all the f- old flyers that we used to put up you know and it had the the old lettering the wood lettering or whatever it was um and uh i used that and just laid it out a little differently um but nobody else is doing it and for okays i actually contacted um the girl that ran that place and now i just is her mind's blanking me kathy she kathy Deathmers. yeah she was she was running high noon there for a while mm-hmm. and she just didn't care she's i don't i don't own the the, I don't own the logo. I don't own the name. It was from somebody else. And she's like, I don't even know where to look, you know? It's, it, but yeah. If I'm it. not mistaken, the person who owned it was the person that actually owned the comic strip. Uh, or at least that's my memory of it. Uh, Seems like that, yeah. 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 But, 
that person but, was but, also older then and was kind of just like, you do what you want over at OKs and we're going to be over here at the comic strip, which I never went into, but I knew that it was a vastly different bar, but they were right next to each other. And yeah, it doesn't matter. I was underage anyway, so I shouldn't have been it either. But, <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, but yeah, and that's, that's actually something uh, my guitarist, Eric, worked at uh, OKs. And when he was at the high noon, they had heard about someone making the logo. And that's the thing is they were upset in the fact that nobody contacted them to ask even if it was okay. They just started doing it and here, yeah. uh, but they didn't care. It was just like, well, how rude, you know, like let yeah. us know you're going to do it. And here you contacted them and they're like, yeah, we don't own it. But you know, basically thanks for letting us know that you're doing it. That's, you know, the, the respectful thing to do rather than yeah. just like, oh, it's not around anymore. I can make it right. You know? Yeah. I wanted to do that. There's obviously some that I, I don't even know where to start to contact these people, you know, and yeah. And sometimes you just do it and, you know, uh, better to ask forgiveness, you know, <laughs> I <don't> know. <laughs> right. But I did that with black bear too. I, I got on, I contacted the, um, the moderator for their Facebook page or whatever. I told her I was doing something and, Oh, all right. And what I actually wanted to know if I could, I could at first, if I could do it and if I could put it up on their page, you know, to sell, to sell some of the shirts. And, um, the girl that used to own it, she's, she's an older lady now. Her, her daughter's actually the one that moderates the page. Okay. So she had to go talk to her mom about it. And her mom's like, I don't care what he does with it, but don't put it on the page. So they didn't want me to sell, solicit it on the page. I can kind of see that. Uh, I, I, totally, I mean, there's a lot of pages like that that don't want that. Cause then all of a sudden people are just trying to solicit everything. Right. Uh, or the so, fact too, that it's just like the page is just a, way for you to make money off of them kind of, you know, just enjoying right. the history of this place. Yeah. Yeah. I it, right. no, there, there are a lot of reasons and that, that makes total sense. Yep. So I had no problem with that. They had no problem with me doing it. Um, and said, good luck, you know, so okay. I'm like, all right, it works <laughs> for me. Uh, yeah. So there's, I'm trying to stay away from anything I do is, is for businesses that don't exist anymore. Mm -hmm. Um, old drive-ins, old roller skating rinks, things like that. Right. Um, I saw um, you did the unicorn recently. Yeah. <laughs> I yeah. Like I forgot all about that place. And uh, my buddy Mark had me or suggested it and I did it for him, but I, then I put it on the site, but that, I don't know if he had the shirt at some point or whatever, but, it's such a cool little logo that I had to, I was so excited to do it. <laughs> yeah. No, that was one until I saw it. I was like, Oh yeah. Which, which is the beauty of the site is it's, yeah, it's an, right. Oh yeah. Kind of site, you know? Right. Yeah. <laughs> no, that's, hope, that's, that's the, that's the plan. That's the hope that that's, that's what it brings to people, I guess. Um, it's what it brings to me. I love, I love it. Um, I love that throwback stuff. It's just yeah. the coolest. Of course. Yeah. yeah. And now let's go back to you saying, uh, learning SEO and all that kind of stuff. So how are you promoting this and what's the process of you do? Like I know because we're friends on Facebook, that's how mm -hmm. I know about it. So I've been seeing it and I'm just like, this is brilliant, but how is it actually going and what are you doing to promote it? I've just started that process. Um, and right now really what I'm doing is just boosting it boosting Instagram posts and, and getting okay. it out there and, and narrowing it into cities in Wisconsin and you know exactly where you're trying to market it to. Mm -hmm. um, so it's easier that way. Or if you're doing it all around the U S it's a little harder to, to pinpoint. Yeah. But if you're just sticking with this one area. Um, then that's where you start. So I've been boosting, starting with boosting Instagram posts and then, um, I haven't done the Facebook one yet. Um, but they're linked up. I, I don't know. Some that's interesting. Stuff. I I've, I've known people that they usually start with both or just Facebook and you're starting with Instagram. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. But I, I, Insta, uh, Facebook was going to be the next thing. Cause you know, whenever you put something up, it says boost this post or whatever. I mean, that's going to be the next thing. Um, I haven't seen a lot of, uh, action on it yet. I just started a couple weeks ago, this boosting stuff. So, um, it's going to be a slow process. Um, but you start there and then you, you go to the next thing. I, I'll probably have to consult with somebody to tell me how to do this. Um, mm -hmm. the, the right way because it's out of my wheelhouse and there's there's tons of people that that know how to do that and you can hire their services to do it you know but right I, i've always wanted to be hands-on i want to learn how to do it oh yeah 
No, there's a benefit to that. Or even like later on when you do hire someone, being able to know what they should or shouldn't be doing or understanding the process of what they're doing and going, yeah. no, that's not going to work. I've tried it, you know? <laughs> yeah. Yep. So there's, there's an art form to that too. Um, and, and just keywording and, and getting your, your, you gotta, you gotta do so much all the time to make sure your, your site's going to be high enough on the Google searches too, which right. is something that's kind of out of my wheelhouse. So there's a whole, there's a whole system there that you got to do and you got to do consistently mm -hmm. for anything like this. I mean, anybody can make a website with t-shirt designs or bracelets or whatever they're selling. Um, anybody can do it and it's simple to do now with, mm -hmm. with Shopify or Etsy or whatever you're doing. Yeah. Um, but man, it's hard to, it's hard to market it. And, and it's, it's just something you have to almost spend more time doing that than, than an actual creating. Yes. You know, at least for a chunk of time. Once I, you can, get it. I can attest to that. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> sure. But now when you say boosting, are you, um, are you, so you're just saying uh, when you do a post and it suggests you can boost the post, that's you're doing that. Yeah. Okay. And then they give you, you can set a, a, a dollar amount and then how long you want it to, to for this ad to run. And are you choosing, and you're actually choosing location and age range, or are you even going further in by doing demographics and interests? Yeah, demographics and interest, and then age is in there, and then you can pinpoint any amount of cities you want. Right. So you start with all the big cities, and then you narrow down into the, like the little, the little ones, and try to hit everything you can. Um, I think last time I had 30, 40 cities on there, and and then you just set it to go, and they they review it for a day and then they send it off. Yeah. Um, they give you, um, the stats and stuff as it's going and all that. And who's, who's clicking on it and all that sort of fun stuff. I would, I would definitely suggest going into the, uh, business manager account and trying an ad. It's fairly similar. It's a little more set up like, but there's three tiers of it. You know, you can do the, you, you set up the, okay, here's what I want to target, whether it be, uh, send people to the website or just like, people see the ad okay. impossible. Yeah. yeah. And then, and then, uh, because when you go through the business side on Facebook, which you can go, I'm going to do it to Instagram or I'm going to do it to Facebook or do both. You can create posts without having to make one. So these don't get seen. They're only advertisements. Whereas you're boosting okay. a post because you have to make one. So you have the benefit of trying things out without going, Oh, I have to make a post for this and boost it every time and wait for it to end. You can do as many as you want and do them in the background and you're not bugging people who already see your stuff. You're trying to find new people. Whereas boosting will target to the people that follow you first and then find oh, people okay. outside. That's good. I didn't know that. Yeah. That's good. So right. just to let you know, it's worth the time to go into the business one. The boosting is really great if you want to boost something that sends people to your site. But mm -hmm. just so you know, when you're boosting, you are first and foremost preaching to the converted already. Uh, people right. who already right. follow you. And then it's going to follow the rest of the stuff is the way that that works. Okay. Yeah, yeah that makes sense. Yeah. And um, that's part of the whole algorithm that everybody hates where now everybody's right. not seeing the timeline in order. They're seeing it like you'll see a, Hey, we're playing tonight. And you'll look at the post and it says posted two days ago. You know, that's, I know I don't get that. Why, why all that changed? I just don't get it. You and know, that's because if you that. boost it, they'll show it to people. Right. <laughs> yeah. Oh, the worst so, so it is worth the time. I do suggest that you go in there and go uh, business.facebook.com is the way to access is the easiest and, and just fool around with it. You don't even have to post anything just kind of, cause it is a little overwhelming. It's more than it's the same I'm concept, sure. but it's, but yeah. it's not, it's a three tiered thing. And that's what I was trying to say is there's the, what kind of ad do you want to show? Then the second part is going to be, uh, who do you want the ad to show to? And then the third one is going to be, what's the ad? That's, that's basically the process you have to go through rather than okay. I posted something. Who do you want to show it to? That's the way the boosting is so much easier, but that's cool. what it does is it doesn't go through as easily. So anyway, yeah, I'm, I was I'm just going to say, go for it. Yeah. yeah. If you're go already it. saying, I want to figure out how it works, give it a try. Yeah. <laughs> I'm up for anything that uh, has, has, is for another option for this. Yeah. Yeah. For sure. And yeah. Um, so over this period of time, uh, are there any sort of things that you've learned from going into business for yourself any sort of tips or guides you could give people who are like going i'm freelancing uh here's what i learned you're like here's something to avoid or you know just any sort of thing that jumps to the top of your head as far as anybody who's like starting to freelance or is thinking of freelancing yeah i think with 
just the just the start of an actual freelance, not full time freelance, or just just dabbling in freelance. It's just obviously the most important thing is getting your reputation built, you know, and and getting your name out there. But really, the building the relationships is the is the key. You mm-hmm. know, I I have clients that I worked with since two thousand six that that come back to me every mm-hmm. year. Maybe it's just one design a year, um, but they keep coming back. Um, and it, it to me that's the most important is the business. You got to do good work and you got to be reliable and available and respond to your emails. You don't have to wait three days to respond to somebody. Right. I'm always on it. Um, and I've always have been. Um, and, and if it, that's different than if you're going, I mean, there's a different school of thought when you're going full-time freelance, not in terms of you don't have to build a relationship. You still have to do that. But the one thing, I don't even remember who told me this, but when you go full-time freelance, you're working at home for yourself. The first thing you, you don't want to do is work in your jammies, you know, <laughs> get dressed in the morning. It, it's, it, it's not motivating to not do it. Mm-hmm. Or, you, know, you have to, even if you're just get, if, if you get up without getting in the shower or anything, I always throw the clothes I had on yesterday, just cause I can't, I can't physically work in my jammies and yeah. whatever you're in a bed. Right. Um, there's little things like that to keep you motivated and to, to keep you aware of what you need to do. If you want to make this your, your job, your full-time job, you know, you got to build that reputation. You got to build the relationships. And then once you get there, you have to find that motivation to keep you going, mm-hmm. whatever that works, however that works for you. If you can work in your jammies all day and, and kick out as much stuff, that's great. This is just the way I do it. I know. Um, I agree with you. I wa- people always uh, give me crap because I walk around with shoes in the house and it's just like, because it's otherwise I feel like I may as well just like sit back and watch TV all day. You know, I, I want to feel like I could at any moment uh, just spring into action and run out of the door. You know, it's, it's I don't want to be like, Oh, I got to put stuff on and get ready to go. Out. Yeah. No, it's, it's, I mean, I may not leave the house all day, but I know that I can, if I need to. Exactly. <laughs> You're ready to roll. You got your cape on already. <laughs> I like that. That's, that's funny. Yeah. And then uh, what kind of, uh, are there any sort of things that you have coming up in the future or things that you're working on right now that uh, you would like people to know about or something in the future coming up that you'd like to mention? Really? I'm just building this, this Ragwar site. And, you know, I, like I said before, I'm not sure exactly where it's going to end up. That's the fun part. You know, uh, yeah. I like where it's going now and I'll stick with that for a while. It's like I said, it's a, it's like a 12 year plan. So, okay. Um, I'm going to keep, I, I genuinely, genuinely try to, to get something new up on that site every week. Um, more if I can, you know, whatever I can get up. Um, you know, I'm working on this stuff early in the morning, late at night or whatever, just to kind of break it up. Whenever I do work on it, that's all I want to do. I'm just, I'm so sucked into it that at the time I'm working on it, it's like, I wish I could do this full time, you know? Right. Uh, um, but I have to mix it in with my other work. Um, How long but, does it take you to make one of these designs? I mean, some of them don't take long at all. It's just, um, you know, anywhere half hour to a couple hours. Okay. Time, I would say, I mean, there's some of the, some of the baseball ones, because I'm 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 looking at like these older these older logos or older aesthetics and stuff. I'm trying to figure out how to make those work visually, okay. kind of update it a little bit, um, but still have that same aesthetic. That takes a little longer sometimes, but I love it. Um, it's a it's a fun process, so it, it it's nothing that I, I re, you know dread doing by a long shot. Um, and with the the Relic Studio stuff you know, that eventually will become an actual studio where I'll have other artists on board as I head into my later years. I can maybe still keep it running, you know, bring that extra income in. Your voice even changed me as I head into my later years. (laughs) No more years. Yeah. Uh, But I want to, first of all, thank you so much for talking with me today. I'm glad that we got the chance to get together. Uh 